we will have you like i won't repeat it but hello everyone yeti williams founder lagos moms and we're talking about education today we have the headmaster from tetton hall college uk with us today and he's going to introduce himself and then vicky's going to introduce herself and we're going to get into you know just discussing schools how to think about schools and specifically we're going to learn about tetton hall so chris kindly introduce yourself and welcome well, Yeti, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you and uh, so many parents. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, my name's uh, Chris McAllister. I'm the uh, headmaster of Tedden Hall College, uh, and uh, we are a, a 2 to 18 uh, day in boarding school in the West Midlands, uh, just outside Wolverhampton, uh, and with great links to uh, Birmingham and Manchester. Uh, we have a traditional curriculum of GCSE and A level, uh, and uh, outstanding performance in all those areas in public exams which I'll tell you about shortly, but uh, just uh, delighted to be able to meet you all this evening uh, and, uh, and say hello, so thank you. All right, thanks, Chris. Thanks for the introduction and welcome. Vicky? Hi, Yeti. Um, yeah, it's really lovely to be in touch. I, I'm Vicky, I'm the admissions director here at the college um, and very, very excited to be coming back to Lagos uh, tomorrow. Um, it's, a, it's a city I'm really familiar with. It's so nice to be coming back and seeing so many friends, going to visit so many schools that we've worked so closely with for many years. So um, yeah, really, really nice. So very excited. Awesome. So I should, should I ask you if you like jello fries then? If you're used Love to Love jello fries, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. You're, you're the real deal. All right. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So um, thanks for the introductions. Now, for the parents that are on and who will watch this later, I think it's important for you can tell us a bit more about about Tedden Hall, the school, where it's located, which you mentioned briefly, Chris. But it will be helpful to maybe give some idea about how close that is to Heathrow Airport, for example, and how long it actually takes to get there, so that we can. You know, a lot of parents would know Heathrow. So if you can help us with that location wise, and then just share some high level details, of course, about the school. Very good, very good. Well, certainly I mean, we're very well located with uh, for access uh, for a number of different airports uh, as well. I mean, the train to London uh, is uh, an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, uh, so it's a really quick line. Uh, and we've also uh, got, uh, you know, Birmingham Airport on our doorstep, really a short drive away. Uh, 40 minutes and Manchester within the hour. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really accessible uh, as, a, as, a, as a venue uh, for, uh, for, for parents and pupils traveling uh, you know, from all corners of the world. Uh, it's very important to us that uh, you know, the, the college is also uh, an open uh, place as well. And the, we've got a lovely village uh, that Tedden Hall is uh, College is located in. So you get the best of both worlds access to um, cosmopolitan uh, you know commuter uh, you know uh, uh, routes from major airports and train stations uh, but also a lovely traditional english village uh, uh, which is which is very safe and uh, it's very important to us that children get the important, get the ability to enjoy um, you know, traditional british culture as part of their education uh, and to actually be a, a part of the community as well not just in boarding but wider uh, in terms of our uh, 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 curriculum and uh, what we deliver, uh, as I said, it's very important that uh, we are a, a, an all through school. So from two to 18 with boarding really beginning in year six. Um, so from about the age of 10 onwards. Uh, and that really just contributes uh, to the real family atmosphere on campus. Uh, part of that is, of course, that um, you know, I send my own children uh, to the school and uh, one in the prep school, uh, Lydia, uh, who's, uh, who's nine and uh, William, who's uh, 11 in the, in the senior school. So really, it's, it's not just as a headmaster I'm speaking to you, it's as a, as a parent of the school as well. And for me, I would never have, uh, you know, the experience I want for every child is the experience I want for my own child. Uh, so that's, that's really um, the most important thing about, uh, you know, my investment uh, in, in, in the college. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, really, we are really very focused on giving every child uh, the best opportunities in life. And an independent education in England really means giving them choices and, and opportunities. So by the, by, the, by the end of their sixth form experience with us, we, we, we're, our expectations are going to the best universities and the right universities for them or on a pathway 
uh, that's going to give them whatever they want to do in life, really. So we've got some really talented students and uh, really uh, that's that's at the heart of what we do. Uh, and as well as the academic rigor that we want uh, uh, for everybody, we also need them to have a balance in their lives and to be able to uh, not just uh, you know, do incredibly well in their examinations, which is our expectation, but also to be able to communicate that uh, to, you know, the wider world. Our students are going to go into, uh, you know, auditoriums to talk to thousands of people. They're going to pitch, uh, you know, uh, at, at multinational, uh, you know, business conventions. They're, they're going to, you know, be teachers, lawyers, doctors, and they need to have those soft skills that go with those, uh, those demanding roles in order to get the best pathways for them. So our curriculum is a holistic one where the lessons, the academics are, are central, but also alongside that, the teachers are supporting every student in really finding out what makes them tick, what their skills are, and how best to prepare them for the outside world when they get there. Uh, and so really uh, that's, that comes to its sort of pinnacle at A-level, but we're preparing every child all the way through and so really from, from the minute they join the school, our expectation is, is that they have uh, a full engagement in our co-curricular program, which is really quite extensive. Everything from you know, chess club to golf, uh, to STEM activities, uh, you know, uh, mock trials, uh, if you're interested in the law. And it's always great to focus on the things that maybe you're not feeling comfortable with, uh, because we all gravitate towards the things that we are or within our comfort boundaries, but really for students, what we want them to do is to feel comfortable in the things that they, they find challenging. And that's, that's where, you know, uh, the, the role of the form tutor and the class teacher really comes to the fore in making sure that every child is known to them and they are known to every child. And really focusing on uh, the area, the talents that they haven't even discovered themselves yet, that they, that they have, and we want to nurture and foster. And so really, as alongside the GCSE curriculum, the A-level curriculum, and all the work leading up to that, uh, there is um, a really supportive uh, team behind every child, from the form tutor to the house parent, uh, to the head of uh, section, the head of year, uh, all working to make sure that we're getting the best out of them. And uh, that's why um, I send my own children to the school. And I couldn't really ask anybody else to send theirs if I don't do that. So. All right, fantastic. Thanks for that overview. So I noted, um, so just to confirm, the school is easily accessible either from Manchester Airport or Birmingham. Is that correct? Absolutely. And we're, we're, in fact, um, uh, Vicky, Victoria and I are flying out from uh, Heathrow um, on, on Saturday um, after, uh, evening, uh, and we're just taking a car there. So okay. it's uh, again, uh, it's, it's very accessible and uh, many parents choose to come through any of those routes. Uh, okay. and, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's really straightforward. I think the other thing that parents can be assured by is we've got a transport team that are based here at the college. So we, we're really careful ensure that the, the travel arrangements with children start from within the school gates and go all the way to the departures. So the children are accompanied, um, all the protocols are followed. If the children are younger, then they're, they're put into the care of the airline. Um, so <clears throat> at no point is uh, a child traveling independently at an age that they wouldn't be. So the transport okay. team do a brilliant job, yeah. Okay, that's good to know. So for parents who are in Nigeria, they can rest easy knowing that you help them get their children safe and sound to them. Of course. Fantastic. All right, so my next question will then be for you, Vicky. Could you talk about the admissions process? And we're talking specifically mm -hmm. now about anybody who might have September 2022 um, at the back of their mind for application process. And then if you can also talk about that and just into the future as well. Sure, absolutely. So, well, look, we, we are, we're busy in the admissions office at the moment. It's sort of the peak time when we're receiving a, a lot of our, our applications. One of the things I don't think we've mentioned yet, we've, we've got students at the college from 24 different countries around the world. Um, so although we've, we're a relatively small, sort of mid-sized school of about 450 pupils, um, our boarding population in particular is this wonderful cosmopolitan blend. So my team at the moment are, are talking to families from all corners of the world, whether that be from Latin America, 
from Western Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, the Far East. We've got students from West Africa. So currently we've got children from uh, Ghana, Nigeria and Gambia, uh, which is which is great. Um, and, you know, the, the key thing for September entry for, for parents is really let us know that you want to start the conversation. Um, mm. The admissions process is absolutely built on really forming a relationship between us and the school and understand first and foremost, are we going to be the right school for their child? Because different, I think as Chris already said, different schools are right for different children. Um, but we, we do both have a huge amount of experience at working with um, West African families, particularly myself in Nigeria, but Chris also taught out in, in Ghana. Uh, I, I work there too. So, so we've, we do feel we have a, a, a real affinity with the, the West African culture. And that allows that relationship build to, to be um, very genuine. Um, so when they first approach us, we have something very akin to this. We talk to them face to face. If we can't do it on the ground in Lagos or in Abuja or in Port Harcourt, then we'll do it on a digital platform. We want to learn all about the child and the entry point. So currently we're looking at admissions into years seven, eight and nine. A small number of places for year 10, but I have to say that that's filling up very fast at the moment. And then I think year 12 is, is where um, I think this, it becomes very interesting for families looking at that two year A-level programme um, or in fact a BTEC in performing arts with us um, before they're making that step on to, to a university, whether here in the UK or the US. What does the admissions process look like? Well, once we've asked, uh, once we know that the family want to join us, we ask them to complete a registration form. Uh, we get the usual paperwork, so school reports, copy of passports, all those sorts of things. And then we usually ask the students to complete a, an assessment. Um, depending on the age of the child, the nature of the assessment will be slightly different, but typically each of those assessments is going to be looking at literacy, numeracy and nonverbal reasoning really so we can build up a picture of where that student sits at the moment. Are they going to be at the right academic um, level for the entry point that they're aiming to, to join us at? And, and how can we help them? Um, because obviously a school is a place where people learn and grow and develop. Um, once that's all done, and we've had a look and the scores are all okay. Um, we would make the offer of a place, all things being equal. Um, and then if the family are Nigerian passport holders, then we work very closely with them to ensure that everything from a tier four visa application process is uh, very smooth and very effective. So um, we, my team are fantastic. They've got a really good depth of experience of getting those through nice and smoothly and in a really timely way. Good news at the moment is actually we've got a slightly bigger window of time than we used to have to get those done. Um, and uh, so we can really get that ball rolling from about the March period, so yeah. Okay, awesome. And is your, are your admission dates pretty fixed or is it a rolling admission process? We, it's, it's down to the capacity in year groups. So when we, once we're full, um, so as I say, year 10, uh, we've had a, we've got a very big and, and vibrant year nine currently who are all staying with us and moving up into year 10. So there's only a couple of vacancies there at the moment. Uh, year seven is probably a shorter time window because all of our assessments are taking place tomorrow, in fact. Okay. Um, but if it's an international application, we can do that on a, a digital way. So we're looking at about a, an eight to 12 week admissions window currently. Okay, all right, see. And in terms of timing for the visa application, you know, obviously with pandemic, offices shut down, things are taking a bit longer. Um, how, is, how is that working out for families to get their visa for children to start school on time? You know, actually, um, in the last two or three months, we've been finding things have definitely eased um, and okay. things have been going a little bit more smoothly. Um, so we're, we're mindful that things are taking longer, but they are going through um, and they are going through pro properly. Um, but it is still the best advice to get that process underway as, as soon as is practical. Um, okay. So yeah. yeah. All right, great. All right, thanks. You know, it's interesting when you mentioned assessments and you know, you do assessments so you can figure out where the child falls and what support the child needs. And I think it was sometime last year, my daughter, who's 14 now, she said, you know, it's pretty unfair that children have to be tested before they go to school because the school is supposed to teach them. So why should they be, you know, like weeded out because they didn't pass a particular mark or something? So it was interesting that you said that because I think when she said that, I thought, 
that's such a good point. You know, you're going to school to learn, so you shouldn't be um, not given admission because you don't know stuff based on the examination. It sounds like a very wise young lady. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, genuinely, we call them assessments rather than tests um, because they are for our staff to have a, a benchmark and a, a line in the sand. But that process of assessment is continuous. And when a student joins us, particularly that first term, that first half year, it is a, a, a process of getting to know each other, um, both for the student to get to know the teachers and the system and the culture and the environment, and for the, um, for the teachers to understand what ways in which that child learns best. Because um, we are very good at adaptive learning. We're very good at ensuring that, that the, the program is, is tailored in such a way that, that if a child does need some additional support, and in fact, that can mean very much at the high level as well as for those who perhaps have specific learning needs. But for those who do need that stretch and that challenge, we, we build that in very much so. Fantastic, thank you. My expectation is, is that the staff are getting to know the students even before they arrive. Yeah. And that's very much the spirit in which these assessments are done so that uh, all of the, you know, the learning characteristics that they have can be built upon and we can actually get the most out of them uh, in terms of areas that uh, you know, we want to see a bit more from. So uh, as, as Vicky's saying, it's, it's, it's the best schools uh, will be the ones that you know, get the most out of children and, and help them to grow uh, rather than uh, some sort of arbitrary um, you know, pass or fail before they've even arrived. Right, right. absolutely. Fantastic, great. Um, I want to also talk a little bit now about the learning pathway, so specifically the curriculum you offer and where your children, once they graduate from the different, um, you know, critical years, where do they tend to move on to? So if we can talk a little bit about that. Mm, very good. Well, certainly um, from years uh, in, in our senior school, children would typically join um, in uh, year seven, going all the way through uh, to, uh, to A-level and uh, graduating at 18, having done A-levels. Uh, so the first three years of uh, senior school are really preparing uh, our students uh, for uh, their GCSE courses when they begin those at the beginning of year 10. So they do the full range of, uh, of subjects, you know, the core subjects, English, maths, the sciences. Uh, they'd have, you know, we, we do two languages, French and Spanish. We also do Chinese uh, as, an extra, uh, as an extra language uh, after school for some students who who wish to do it as well. Uh, but there's arts, business, uh, uh, there's uh, computer science, drama, electronics, uh, geography, history, music, physical education, and uh, religious studies, as well as our uh, sports and games program on top of that. And uh, when they get to uh, the uh, into year nine or before they begin into their GCSE studies in year 10, uh, we ask students to make their option choices for GCSE at that point. Uh, and of course, they would do the core subjects of English literature, English language, uh, maths, and the three sciences, and usually take um, at least one language forward if they've studied it before. Uh, and then from that, they can then select usually three of the remaining subjects uh, to, take, to take further. So if their skills are, you know, music and, uh, and history and art, they, they can have a focus on that. Uh, or they may prefer to, you know, to focus on the electronics, the, uh, uh, the, the, the drama, the, you know, the, the more sort of uh, technical side of things as well. It's very much built around the pupil. And that's quite an important thing because many schools might give uh, their students uh, the, uh, uh, if you like, the, the option blocks to pick from. We actually uh, build our option blocks around our pupils' choices. Uh, because it's very important that they feel that they are involved in, in their, their education. We want to give them as many opportunities as possible. And so for that reason, uh, it is very much child-centered. And then when we get to uh, the, you know, transitioning from GCSE uh, to A-level, students will typically take uh, three A-levels with us. Uh, and there's the option to do the EPQ as well, extended project qualification also, uh, which uh, we have as an additional part of our scholarship program, which I'll tell you about shortly. Uh, but we offer a full range of, um, uh, of A-level subjects, uh, uh, about uh, 20, 22 to 24, depending on the year. So uh, there's plenty of choice there. 
uh, and variety. And really, as you know, with A-level, uh, the class sizes are even uh, smaller uh, than GCSE, where the ratio of uh, teacher to pupil uh, is, is such that it's more like a university uh, tutorial uh, than, a, than, a, than, a, than, a, than a typical classroom uh, as such. So uh, that's, that's very important to us. And as I was saying, with uh, underpinning all of this is our ambition for every child. So we have our scholarship program, which uh, is a quite a an extremely tangible thing in the sense that when every pupil arrives in the senior school, they get their very own uh, personal copy, hard copy of uh, the scholar's handbook. And in there is uh, by year group and by subject, uh, a huge plethora of uh, really interesting projects and tasks to stretch every child. Uh, and uh, what, we, what they do is they engage in that immediately. Every half term, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a deadline for them to meet with a really interesting uh, piece of work to submit that should get feedback from, from their subject specialist teachers. Uh, and then we celebrate that achievement with um, a scholars assembly where they all get a, a certificate personally awarded by me uh, with distinction merit pass based on uh, what they have done. And uh, the, it really is a celebration of academic success. And the important thing is, is that every single child gets it. So obviously we have our nominated scholars who are performing at an exceptionally high level and it's an expectation that they do that part of their scholarship. However, the level of engagement from our pupils who maybe aren't formal scholars, but are still encouraged warmly to uh, engage in that program is excellent as well. So it's really, it's about our ambition for every single child of the school uh, to stretch those who are at the very top, who are gonna go on to Oxford and Cambridge, you know, and Harvard and Yale, uh, you know, and, and also to make sure that the students that really um, have their own talents, but maybe, uh, you know, haven't, haven't excelled in, in a particular thing, have the chance to do that uh, and, and have with the support of their teachers. So, as I said, it comes back to me being as much of a parent in this uh, as a headmaster uh, and, uh, and, and, and to the heart of everything that we do. Fantastic. Great. Wow. Um, can, I, can I come to school? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <We'll book> yeah. <laughs> and I think the other but, thing just to say we, we were delighted this year um every single one of our year 13 students so 100% of them went on to their first choice of university uh, about 50 those were Russell Group so you know we had uh, uh, UCL and Exeter and uh, Bath and Bristol and Manchester and Durham um and uh, Imperial um, and then others, you know, it's really important to know as well that, you know, that's fantastic for those students for whom those are the right courses. But but a notable number of our students um, will go on to do things like um, art college and go to some wonderful art schools and um, and one or two um, are now making their way on to the um, degree apprenticeship uh, routes with companies such as Jaguar Land Rover and, and some really big international brands as well. So it, it isn't one size fits all. And I think I think that's a really important thing in the, the, the evolving educational climate that, that we're all living through at the moment, that, that the opportunities for children are really broad, but I think it's a really hard place for them to navigate at the moment. And they do need that support that people such as our sixth form heads and our careers tutors and our pathway leaders, that they're, they're there to, to really help with that navigation. Um, and it's changing so quickly. And um, the points of reference from when we went to university are so different now. Um, so we're, we're all trying to keep up to speed. <laughs> Absolutely. Great, great, great point when you say that, you know, I noted something here about future of jobs and it's a question we'll get through, get to hopefully at the end if we have time for more Q&A. But it's really important that we're preparing our children for the future that's so uncertain and so changeable and so fluid. But with that, we can leave them confused. And I like what you said, Vicky, that there are so many options, but they still need that guidance. They still need to kind of, you know, we, we, we can't say because there's so many options, you can do anything you end up not really doing anything well at all. Um, absolutely great. And I also noticed that you mentioned Harvard and Yale. I went to Yale for business school. Um, so do you have quite a few of your students that go on to other countries then? What percentage would you say? 
Yes, well, it varies slightly from year to year, depending on uh, which uh, you know uh, background the children are from. But we um, support. We have a dedicated specialist team of advisors in our sixth form who advise um, each individual child, not just on the um, UCAS process, which of course, as you know, is the the UK um, sort of university application process, uh, but also on. Um, international applications and common entrance uh, and, and so on for, for various different uh, uh, universities. Some will be going to top universities in Hong Kong or mainland China. They might be going to the US or Canada, uh, you know, studying in, in, in Paris or Berlin. Uh, so all of that is supported uh, and underpinned by uh, our, our careers team. Uh, and so uh, it's, it, it's, it's a normal part of what they do. Uh, and not novel at all, uh, and and, it's, and and they they enjoy doing it as well, which is which is lovely. Yeah, the majority, I will say, the majority are going to UK universities. Right. Um, I would say that that's still the, the trend. Um, although there's a little bit of movement towards European universities um, with some interesting pathways there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots, lots of options and I, I have a question I'm going to ask you at the end what what do you say to a child who says why do I have to go to university if I'm making all the money I need from being an influencer in my 12th grade for example <laughs> but we'll leave that till the end because we have a few more questions and then I want to make sure we have time for Q&A um, I want us to talk about diversity you know you, I mean you know before that I want us to talk specifically about scholarship options and eligibility because that's a question I get a lot. So if you can, let's spend some good time on that. What are the options? How can children be eligible for that? And what is the path that parents have to take to make sure that their children are actually considered for scholarships? Very good. Now, a, a very good question. There. Thank you. Um, certainly, when it comes to uh, scholarships, the uh, a very important part of it. There are several phases. One, of course, as, as, as Victoria mentioned, is uh, the assessment that students would do um, at the point of admission. Uh, so whether they're initially applying, uh, which would look at key skills and in, 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 in key areas. Uh, we'd also want to look at um, their uh, school reports uh, and uh, what, what their, their current uh, head teachers uh, and teachers have said about them, which is really important. Uh, wherever possible, uh, we also like to uh, meet uh, with them face to face as well, hence the trip to, uh, to Nigeria. Um, uh, I try to do this with every student, which is, which is um, a really important part of uh, you know, what, what we want to get to know them before they arrive. Um, and so uh, that, that, those are the main uh, themes that we would do, those um, initial assessments uh, prior to arriving uh, uh, and invigilated as well. Uh, the school reports, uh, and uh, and of course to, to brief them on what the scholarship actually involves, because it's it's not just a title, uh, it's not just um, a sort of uh, accolade. Uh, it's a really interactive and and, and and engaging program that involves quite a deal of responsibility on the part of the student themselves. There are really demanding tasks in there, which they are expected uh, to to do, and and the, the work that comes out from our scholars is exceptional. One of the scholarships that we're bringing to Lagos um, is actually a new one that we've introduced, uh, which is called the Harden Scholarship. And that's actually named in honor of a, a pupil of our school, uh, a former pupil, Arthur Harden, who actually won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. Uh, and the, it's a, it's a STEM-based uh, 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 scholarship, focusing particularly on the sciences uh, and, and mathematics. Uh, and, and really, uh, that is the... Is, a, is an area of focus that I think that any, any student would enjoy. So if you've got a particular skill in the sciences, then um, you know, that the Harden Scholarship is one we'd like to talk to you about. But we also have scholarships in the performing arts um, as well. So if you're, you know, uh, you know, if, if the theater is your thing, uh, if you're a performer, um, then you know, we, we would love to see you um, on, our, on our beautiful Victorian stage in uh, our Towers Theater you know, treading the boards there um, and, and doing, a, you know, an assessment for that. Um, and there's also, of course, our sports scholarship, uh, which is um, uh, led by our uh, head of uh, uh, sport and, and games. And uh, that's a really demanding uh, uh, field, not just in terms of the, uh, you know, uh, playing of the, of the, whatever your specialist sports are. And we have, you know, um, Commonwealth, uh, 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 you know, um, participants 
Uh, we have budding Olympians at the school. Uh, we've got many of our students are competing already at county level uh, outside the school in addition to their school commitments. So um, there's, there's quite a lot there, as well as, of course, an art scholarship, uh, which is uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, not just traditional fine arts, but all the different branches of art. Uh, and our, uh, our, our head of art, uh, Mrs. Vaughan Simmons, is really very uh, an inspiration. It takes me about 10 minutes to walk past the art department because uh, I've always wanted to just call and see what they're doing in their little garrets there. Um, and every, 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 every art student in the, in the senior level, in the most senior level, has their own cubicle, basically their own miniature studio that they work from, uh, as well as the all round academic scholarship. Uh, also, which is a general assessment uh, based on their, 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 their entry exam. So there's a lot happening with it. Um, and we like to be very, very um, rigorous with uh, the, the assessment set uh, and preparation for that, because, you know, uh, we want to make sure that the, the school is the right fit for the right students and that they are on the right courses and uh, where it's applicable on the right scholarship. That's awesome. So um, <clears throat> I go, you have STEM based scholarship, the different types, STEM based, um, performing arts, sport, arts and all around academic. Yes. And music. So those are, those and, are a lot. Oh, and music. OK. I think the, the, the bit that um, Chris mentioned uh, very um, early on there about the um, liaison with the schools, one of the reasons that, that we come is obviously to meet new families and also obviously meet the families and students we have at the school and talk to them about how progress is going. But I spent many years now visiting a lot of the schools in Lagos, um, got great relationships with everyone from um, the Grange Children's International, Green Springs, Meadow Hall, um, Greenwood House, St. Xavier. So we, we value those relationships with the people other than the parents who know the children best and can give those uh, recommendations. Um, you know, when we go and make a presentation at somewhere like Vivian Fowler and, and, and you know, meet some of their wonderful young ladies um, mm -hmm. to then talk to the teachers who know them and who've taught them over the years and get their take on what their next steps should be um, is, is, is quite, um, it's quite powerful actually. Um, so we take quite a lot of store in those recommendations as well as as, as the sort of paper-based reports. Right, right. That's, that's a really good point. Because just, apart from parents, right, your teachers know you pretty well. So it's, uh, it's great to get their feedback. Okay, so um, conversation of time. And this feels like we've been, it's been, I've been enjoying the conversation, by the way, taking lots of notes. Um, I wanted to ask one more question, which is what type of student would you say would thrive at your school. I am seeing, even just based on the, some of the things you've said, the types of scholarship options that exist, it does seem like it's very broad. But if you were to summarize two, three things that each child that would thrive through coming, your, coming through your school, what would you say those are? And you can both share on that and it has to be different. So you can't- yeah. well, I can assure <laughs> you it will be, it will be. Uh, right. uh, but consistent, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely say that the first thing is, um, uh, the thing I'd always want from a child is to a child is to be able to prepare to give it a go, to really just venture outside of their comfort zone. But they'll do that with help. And that's the most important thing, because um, as a parent myself, with one child who is, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, quite a time self-contained, not, not as confident uh, in certain areas, you know, a little bit shy, in fact. Um, but really talented uh, and, and, and getting them to, to open up and to, and to try something new in, in, in something they haven't done before. And I also have another child who is, you know, no shrinking violence at all and uh, is, is certainly no, in, you know, very confident at stepping forward. Mm. Uh, and both of them have got their own unique talents. And so we create a culture really in which um, those different personalities will all thrive because there are so many different areas that, uh, you know, and skills and, and talents that children have, and they don't even know they have them yet. And what we want is to, to, to help them discover that. Uh, and then when they do, to get the most out of them. And uh, right. whatever age they come to us and whatever those areas are, but I would say that. And we, we also want to build resilience as well, right. because that's really important. There's a big world out there. 
and uh, we want to you know make sure that when they leave us they are going into the world as prepared as possible so i think that that an adventurous spirit that we want to foster it's there in different degrees in every child uh, but also uh, you know to, to to build the confidence levels and at times humility uh, for every single uh, every single one of us fantastic so give it a go and build resilience yes so have resilience which and you would help them through both of it which i really absolutely. like absolutely yeah vicky you know i i agree with all of those um i I'm always looking when I come and meet families, meet kids, whether it's in Nigeria or any other part of the world. I want nice children, mm. children who are kind, children who are grateful for being given the privilege of coming to a lovely school like ours or any of the other brilliant boarding schools in the UK or in other places. You know, we are amazing environments to come to school in and these children are really lucky um, and it works so well when those children acknowledge that and, and and value that so that those values that children have whether they are christian um, muslim um, hindu sikh you know we, we you mentioned the word diversity earlier we we're a really diverse population here at Tenton hall we're in the west midlands of england we've got children from all um, ethnicities and faiths um, and we we all gel together really nicely but that relies on people who have common values mm. so I think that that value track and that 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 attitude mm. towards being nice to each other is really important mm. that's a really really good point I would say that what what I want from every child who comes to technical college is to understand that they are, them to understand really, that they are a citizen of the world and that the world's a big place and they're gonna have a big part uh, to play in it. And uh, they are the next generation. And uh, you know, we want them to, you know, to, to make the world a better place. And uh, so it's that spirit in which we want them to arrive and leave. Right, fantastic, love it, great, great. It's been a really good conversation. And um, for parents that are on here live, if you have any questions, you can, put it in the Q&A um, button on the bottom of your screen, or you can raise your hand. So either option would work. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to see if we have any live questions, because I also have some questions that were sent in before today. Um, while we wait for questions to come in, you have mentioned the fact that you will be in Lagos from tomorrow, I believe. So if you can talk about that, how do parents get in touch with you? Um, how many families are you seeing? Even though we're going to share a lot of that material as well through all our audience and after this webinar as well, it'll be recorded and shared, but if you can share that now. Okay, so, uh, well, we, we're gonna be in Akoi from uh, Sunday the 30th through to Saturday the 5th. Uh, we'll be there all day on the Saturday as well. Uh, we, we, it's great. We've got some appointments already booked. We're seeing some lovely families, but we do have some available spots. So um, we're staying at the Wheat Baker Hotel. So um, we're very pleased to meet families there, share a cup of coffee, come down, meet with us, um, bring your kids. It's lovely to talk about our school, but but we really love meeting the children and and learning about them and, and finding out their stories too. So that's where we'll be. Um, and that's the dates that will be there. Okay. And to, to make an appointment, they have to send an email or can they just come in? If they just pass in with Baker Hotel, can they just show up? If they want to drop in uh, and we're there, we've got we've got quite a few schools we're visiting, so uh, we're not going to be there the whole time. Uh, but if they want to uh, contact us, we'll put it on the information, but it's admissions at techcol.co.uk. Okay. So if you can just drop that in the chat so that anybody who's here live that wants to pick it up um, and I will be sure to share that as well. All right, I've had one person send me a question here saying, um, what happens in a situation where um, the child doesn't have any specific talents and it's not particularly academic? Um, what happens with a child like that in your school? Right, well, um, what I want uh, in the same way that, you know, we, we say with, with an adult, every child is unique. And I would say that they, they do have uh, something that they can grow into that they can get good at even if they feel that they can't right now and that's the whole purpose of a school like ours is that we're going to help them discover that little pathway that they have that little spark that they have no matter how obscure it is there is something there and it is fair to say that not every child is uh, uh, you know uh, 
leaps out of bed every morning, grabbing their satchel and, and rushing to the, to, 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 to the classroom, desperate uh, to, to learn. Uh, sometimes they do need to be you know, motivated. And certainly that's why our, our boarding routine is really based around supporting children to make sure they're gaining the skills in life to be self-starters and to have a sense of responsibility for you know, getting up on time, making their bed, hanging their clothes, uh, making sure that they're, they're organizing themselves so that their preps and their homeworks are done. Uh, and we find that once children get into those habits, if, if they don't first have them, they start to appreciate the, the, the academic flow of the school. And, and, and at the very least, um, what they do is they, they, they actually start to not worry about, you know, not having stuff done on time because if they're not organized, and if they're not, you know, getting getting themselves sorted, then they won't. Um, but we don't expect them to do that in isolation. They do that with support. Uh, some need more than others, and it tends to be boys more than girls. And but you know, that's life. So right. <laughs> okay, great, great. Another question I have here is when you talk about your scholarships, what type of percentages are we talking about? Yeah. It does vary slightly depending on the age of the child, first and foremost. So uh, there are, um, it's just generally it works with a slightly smaller percentage at the year seven and year nine entry point um, and slightly higher percentages in the sick form. Um, they would be somewhere typically year seven to nine between about 10 and 25 percent, depending on the caliber of the student and the level that they've reached. Um, a sick form scholarship could attract something anywhere up to 50 percent. Um, we don't give free places um, because we want to make our opportunities available to as many deserving children as, as possible. Um, but I do think it's important for families to talk to us. Um, the other thing to consider, we, we have a number of families with us who've got a number of children with us. Um, believe it or not, we've got some families who've got four with us. Wow. Now, you know, that's an enormous investment for a family you know, even on a day place, but let alone in boarding. So, you know, do talk to us. We are a, a, a school that knows the importance of that investment. We take it really seriously. Um, and we're also open to talking to families about how we can bring something together as a package that can work for them, not just for one year, but for the duration of the time that the children are going to be at the school. Okay. So there's some flexibility in terms of, so I, is there any needs based per se, or it's more of just working with the family as needed? It, it, it's, it comes together as one process, really. There is a formal bursary um, process that um, both international and, and UK domestic families are welcome to apply for. But the key thing is talking to us about where the family is now. And, you know, again, particularly where there might be siblings, um, how we can help the family um, navigate that, that big investment. Okay, okay. That's great. Good to know. And so in summary, really, the best thing is for them to get in touch with you. It'll be great for them to meet you. They're physically in Lagos to come by and meet you at Weed Baker Hotel by sending an email that you have dropped in the chat and they will get from listening to this. And what else was there? And the best thing really is to come and talk to you with their children if they can, because that way you can figure out the best path and what the child brings to the table, what the child needs, and if your school is the right fit for them, Tetson Hall, right? Yes, we like people, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> and one last question, um, discipline. I'm sure, I don't know if you get that a lot, but mm -hmm. you know, how do you discipline children? You know, is it all, you know, sometimes Nigerian parenting style might be interesting or different. Um, so a lot of parents wonder, how do you discipline their child who steps out of line what does that look like? Yes, I mean, for, for us, um, and bear in mind, I'm speaking to you from having had some experience of teaching in West Africa already. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate there is a difference. And uh, we have the highest standards and expectations of behavior um, in the school, uh, both in terms of not just getting you know, the academic rigor that we bring, but also the, the manners and the attitude that we expect from every pupil in the school. That's very, very important to us. Uh, I also understand that, um, you know, all the angels are in heaven and, you know, we all make mistakes. And really schools are safe places for children who are growing, who are learning to sometimes make a mistake. But in the spirit of wanting to help them grow and to be a better person, we obviously uh, would correct that uh, and make sure that, you know, 
that, that, that it doesn't happen again. So uh, behavior is very good at the school. Um, and uh, I would say that, uh, as, I, as I said, as a parent, I, I say that as well. I, I want my son and daughter to be in a, a loving, caring environment where they can be themselves and thrive and do well in every lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the expectation that we have. And of course, sometimes, uh, you know, some you know, children fall short of that. Uh, and th there are times when, you know, I, you know, uh, the, the, the teacher might have to chastise them, you know, that we have a ladder of um, interventions that we put in place that's very consistently applied across all students um, for, to ensure that, you know, uh, interventions are there and escalated appropriately if behavior um, is, is, is below what we expect. It's very rare that I would have to suspend or, or sadly expel a child. Uh, however, it has happened. Um, and, uh, you know, but uh, that's because our expectations are, are very high and uh, we want to maintain that level of discipline and uh, behavior in, in, in every part of the school. I think um, just building on that, the clarity and communication, I think are really important. Clarity for the child to know what is and isn't acceptable. Uh, we have absolutely no tolerance of any form of uh, drug use or smoking or anything like that um you know they and they know that and that's made very clear to them and that i have to say they are very very good at adhering to that but also communication both with the children but i have to say from my point of view um getting to know the families from the admissions process mm. That communication with families through the time that their children are with us um, is hugely important. And if we have a really strong relationship with, with the mums and dads, um, and we're all speaking from the same page, so that if there are, is a time when, you know, the child is perhaps not on the right path and perhaps behaving in a way that we are disappointed by, then that joined up approach from home and school so we're all messaging consistently really does seem to work and that's why we come out and meet families so you know if your child's with us you know that you're going to meet either the headmaster myself or a member of the leadership team in Lagos um, to chat through things at least at least once a year okay all right it's really good well thank you I've, I've really learned a lot thank you for spending this evening with us um, you know, we'll summarize this, we'll send it out. I hope the parents who've joined and who will listen to this after will get a chance to meet you when you're in Lagos. And even if they cannot, thank God for technology, they can always get in touch with you and have such, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations this way, right? So do you have any last words you'd like to share, Chris, Vicky, as we wrap up today? Well, just for me to say, yet it's been an absolute pleasure. The feeling is entirely mutual. And uh, I look forward uh, to, to seeing you again soon. And uh, but you know, uh, we look forward to Vicky and I look forward to meeting uh, uh, any parents that would like to uh, to engage with us uh, at the Wheat Baker Hotel uh, this coming week. And uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been some time since I've been to West Africa um, with the pandemic, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so uh, for for me, it's about the personal connections with with parents that's really important. Uh, and uh, as Victoria said, uh, the face to face and getting to see them and their children is, is, is really vital to us. So uh, thank you for, uh, uh, for, for facilitating this evening's uh, meeting. It's been an absolute pleasure on my part and uh, I look forward to, uh, to, to seeing you in person soon. Thank you. Oh, definitely, I would love to come out and visit. So it'll be great to meet up when you're back in town. All right, and Vicky? Yeah, just to echo Chris's words, we're really excited to be in Lagos. And, uh, and and hopefully a trip after that uh, later in the year, we'll be heading up to Abuja as well. Um, so yeah, we can't wait to meet everybody. Fantastic, safe travels to Lagos. Thank you. And um, thank you, we're gonna have a great weekend everybody. And we'll Take be care. in touch soon. Take care now, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.